Hey guys, welcome to Brian's Man Cave. So today I'm going to be talking about another trading card game uh, that I kind of collected. Never really played very much. In fact, I don't even think I've actually played it with an opponent. I think I've just set it up and played it by myself just to learn the rules. And that is Doomtown. Well, actually, it's, well, it says Deadlands on it as well. I, I think it's Doomtown, Deadlands. I don't know. Maybe they just went through a name change or something. But uh, in the rule book, it's called Doomtown. But on the back of the card, it says Deadlands. So I'm not exactly sure what the uh, issue is there. I, I'm pretty sure this is based off of like a role-playing adventure. Um, now, the only reason why I collected these is because I, I liked the Western movies. I liked the, uh, you know, I liked the more modern Western movies. Not not those really old ones, you know. The, I'm not into the, the Clint Eastwood or the, the Spaghetti Westerns. I mean, they're not bad. I don't hate them. It's just that I like the newer ones like Tombstone and... Uh, the Quick and the Dead, you know, things like that. I like the more modern one. I, um, even Django Unchained was kind of cool. So, um, and of course, I'm also, I always loved card games, and I was really a big uh, collector of CCGs, like collectible card games. And I just liked playing them and collecting them. So naturally, when I saw that there was one based off of kind of like a Western theme, I started picking up the packs and, and some of the booster box or the uh, uh, structure decks or whatever you call them. And um, I, I started to learn the rules, and I thought it's an interesting game. Now, the thing is, though, it plays a little bit more like a board game than it does like a, a card game. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of picking up and moving around the board. Um, very similar to Star Wars and uh, the card game, collectible card game, which I did an ep I did, um, when did I do that? Quite a while ago, actually. Uh, I did a, uh, t I talked about the Star Wars CCG. So this one's a little bit similar in that you kind of set up uh, a board and you move your cards around. And so what I mean by that is everybody has to start off with uh, a family kind of clan, a home, um, like this one here. It's the Watley family estate. And you can tell by the border and it's got this clan symbol. It's got that there, this one here. And it's got the little sack of money here, and that's how much uh, gold, I should say, you, you start off in the game. Of course, gold is currency, and that's how you spend your money. And then you get this little number here, which is the uh, amount of gold you accumulate each day. Kind of like a, a paycheck, think of it that way. But you get payday every day, so you get uh, three gold chunks every day. And... Um, the, the main part of this uh, game, I would say, would be your characters, which these are just an example, you can summon to the field, but this game allows you to actually do a small little setup in the beginning. You can pay, uh, you can bring in five characters, that's it. So you, you have to look at how much they cost, which is down here in the, in the bottom here. It's got a little cost thing. So this guy costs two to pull out, and uh, this one's a little bit more. He's five. So you got to be careful. I mean, you don't want to spend all your money on these five characters and not have any money left over. So you got to think wisely. And I believe it's up to five. I don't think you have to bring all five in there. But at least it gets you a starting point. So in the beginning of the game, you'll have your home, which is like a, you know, a property, and you'll have your five uh, characters. I believe they call them dudes in this game so you're dudes but there's multiple types of dudes anyway so there's like shaman there's uh, which can actually um, cast spells uh, or whatever um, there's hucksters here's an example of a huckster and they all have different uh, they all have different abilities like any other card game each one has their own uh, effects on the game some are just common uh, they have nothing like this guy Billy no neck <laughs> He's obviously just in there for strength. Um, a lot of card uh, card games also have their vanilla, what they call vanilla characters. They're just plain, but they could be strong, but have no abilities or, or nothing. This guy doesn't seem like he has anything. He can't even use weapons, actually. He's got a little piece of text there that says, Billy cannot have any weapons. So that would be the other thing you could do in this game. You have uh, other different kinds of cards that do different things. So you have weapons what he can't carry so ideas like this you got your buffalo rifle 
And of course it's got a cost to it down there and you can equip it to your characters in play. You've got a Derringer, which looks cool. It tells you how many bullets it requires. You got this uh, cool looking pearl handled revolver. Not bad looking. And uh, another white roll. I just pulled out a few from this one deck that I had created a while ago. Um, I, I actually created some decks just to give the game a shot. Um, the thing I didn't like about it is it takes up a lot of table space and there's just constant moving of the cards. Uh, but on the, on, the, you know, on the plus side of this game is it's different than a lot of other uh, card games that I've played in that if you noticed when you've been looking at these cards, you'll see there's some playing card pieces in the corner there. And so in the game, you actually have to break out and play some poker. <laughs> So you have to know your poker rules if you want to play this game. Um, even at the start of the game, or, or at the start of the turn, I should say, each player has to play a low ball round of poker, which is cool. And, and I've never seen any other card game do that. So I, I think that's, you know, this, this kind of adds that extra level of complexity to the game. But it also makes it much more interesting and different. They didn't, they didn't just look at another game like Magic the Gathering and just pretty much rip off the rules and create their own characters and create a new game. I mean, they actually went to the trouble of thinking about how they can make this game more of a Western style. And, and what, what did people do in the West? They played cards. So, I mean, you know. And so, essentially what you would do at the start of your turn is you would put your normal hand aside. You would you'd start the game with five cards. You'd put that aside. And then you would draw. And, you know, again, you know, reference to the West, you know, draw. So you draw your hand of five, you reveal it, whoever has the, the lowest poker score, poker, you know, re regular poker, not um, any of the other variants, just straight up five card stud poker, whoever has the crappiest hand essentially wins. Um, I don't know why they do it low ball, but they decided to do it low ball. And that just means that you're the one kind of guiding that turn. You get to make the first actions, draw the cards. You know, so the turn kind of works in that kind of format. It's not, it's my turn, and then it's your turn, and then it's my turn. You're constantly shifting who's the actual person who's running the turn. Then, on top of that, you have things like reaction cards. Now, the thing is, um, the borders on these cards, um, they're very, very similar to each other. So it is a little bit tricky to tell the cards apart. You almost have... You have to read the, the actual text to know what they are. Uh, I mean, there's slight differences, but I, I find that a lot of the cards look the same. And this is a reaction card, so this is something you would play in reaction to something else happening. So if you've played any other card games, you know that there's usually effects that happen or something happens in the game that allows you to play a certain card. Well, that's pretty much what this is. Uh, like this one, it says, play this card in the event of a tie, the same hand rank in a shootout, to win the shootout by one rank. So what they're meaning there is uh, during the battle phase, which is typical with card games, if you get a tie, this card can actually help you win. Um, and that's what I was going to get to too. That's where also the battle comes in, and that's where you draw again. So at the start of the battle phase, you will put your hand aside, draw your five cards from the top of your deck, reveal it. Now Interesting enough, though, depending on the uh, characters that are in the battle, um, let me just take out one of these characters just to kind of give you an idea. Some of them will have a bullet there. And depending on if it's a gold bullet or a silver bullet, you can either add cards to your hand. So you can add, say, this guy is a bullet, uh, gold of two, gold bullet of two, which means you add two extra cards to your draw hand to help you build your poker hand. The other one allows you, I believe, to change cards. I have to look that up now. But it's basically these guys can help modify your poker hand. Again, kind of adding some interesting changes to the game. And reasons to have better, more experienced players. Now I'm assuming the way they balance these cards is the uh, the number and the, the uh, card suit. Uh, if it's like a really good character, they're probably not going to give them the strongest suit, you know, like the ace of spades or something like that, we're going to give him like a four of spades. Um, and probably if the card was a little bit more rare, 
maybe it would have a better suit and a better, you know. But, I mean, I, I think ultimately you're trying to always get the better poker hand, except for when you do the low ball. Then, because you're always going to want the higher numbers. You're going to want, you know, you don't want to win the game of poker. You don't want to have twos. So this guy's a two, uh, two of spades. Um, and he doesn't seem to do, he's really just a, uh, he's got a two for his uh, bullet there. So let's just move on to another card, actually. Um, during your uh, shootout, what they call it, instead of, you know, battle phase, it's actually a shootout. You can play cards like this. This is called Bad Tequila. Um, it's a noon card, so you play it at high noon. That's when the shootout begins. And it says, boot any dude. So boot is to tap them. If you've ever played Magic or any other games where you turn it, you boot them. Uh, with less than two influence, you, you essentially will take them out of the card, uh, the, the fight. Influence would be this here, things like that. That's, I believe, the influence. It's like a poker chip. And so the object of this game is really to build up your town and try and build up more influence and victory points by winning battles. So outside of your normal deeds, the one that you start off and play, so that was this one, you could play them from your hand as well. So this is like the Green Eye Saloon. It, get, it costs two to put it into play, and then each turn it provides one piece of gold. Uh, it also has some keywords in there, public, saloon, non-unique. So they all have their own little abilities. This one's the town well. It's public. It gives you, uh, or it costs three, but I guess it doesn't give you anything. It doesn't give you any uh, production during your turn. And the, uh, the idea is to control these. Get your dudes on there. Similar in the Star Wars game where you'd play your uh, your locations and you'd get your characters over there to control the location. The more you control, the more production you make. This one makes two each turn. And the more points you get. You get. And it really just comes down to a points game at that point. It's like the, the winner is the one who has the most victory points uh, and influence points higher than the the highest total on the board of a player. Kind of an odd thing there. You have to do a lot of calculating. And that's what I noticed too when I was playing this game by myself. I was thinking there's a lot of adding and subtracting going on. You're constantly looking at the, the plus this and plus that and minus this. Um, again, kind of similar to a lot of other card games. Um, but you also have to know your poker hands. You have to know the high ball, the low balls, all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, I think it's a pretty interesting game. I wouldn't mind actually trying it out uh, one day, you know, get a friend who would actually want to play this and, you know, setting up. But you need the space. You need a lot of space. And I felt that when you got, like, your deed, like, you'd have your row of deeds. You'd have them all lined up, just like a town. So you'd have all your deeds lined up. It's kind of hard showing it like this. Uh, and then you would have your characters. They'd be under here, and then they'd have to move here on the next turn, and then they'd have to move here. And then if they have any weapons or attachments to them, you have to take all those with them and move them around, move them along. And then they move out into the town square where they can fight. So there's a lot of different things going on. Your opponent could be here, and you could be here. And if you're at the same location, you can have a battle there. So, I mean, the rules are kind of complicated. And, and actually, it did take me quite a bit to remember these rules and to even learn them in the first place. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm still a little bit fuzzy on some of the rules because I, I just haven't bothered to pick it up in a while. But I just wanted to talk about it because it's one of these card games that I picked up that actually is pretty fun and different. It's different than a lot of other card games. So if you're looking for something in a collectible card game that is not just another Magic clone or Pokemon clone or Yu-Gi-Oh clone or whatever card game you're, you're used to, this is actually pretty decent. And it's got a great Western theme, theme story to it. Kind of reminds me of the movie Jonah Hex, which also has its own storyline to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would uh, and make sure you know how to play poker. <laughs> That's all I can stress. You have to know how to play poker. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if you can get these anywhere in stores. You'd have to go to um, eBay or somewhere. You have to find a website uh, where people sell old card games because they don't make this anymore. This was actually made by Pinnacle in 1998. So these cards don't exist anymore. I 
think there might be a living card game out there. Don't quote me on that. But uh, I think I did see something about that. And what a living card game is, is where they sell, pretty much they just sell you all the cards and you just, you just build, you just build decks. You don't have to buy booster packs. You don't have to, there's no rarities or anything like that. And frankly, I don't think any of these cards are worth anything anyways. So you could probably go on eBay and probably find someone selling a whole ton of these for like hardly anything. Because I doubt they're, they're collectible anymore. Like people probably don't even realize this game exists. So, I, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there because I always enjoyed uh, collecting the cards. I like the artwork. I mean, some of it looks pretty cool. There's arson there. You know, it's really got that cowboy feel to it. Tequila. And the quick draws. I mean, really cool cards. And I really dig the poker theme. Anyways, yeah. Let me know what you think of the game. I'm sorry I didn't run through the entire rule set. I didn't intend to really make this a how to play video it's just more of an introduction showing you that the game exists and then if you're into something like this you might want to look into it some more you might want to pick some of them up who knows maybe you'll find somebody who who has the game and wants to play uh yeah let me know in the comments below hope you liked the video hope you subscribe to my channel talk to you later